every organization has a duty towards itself towards society towards its members towards its stakeholders towards its shareholders a shareholder is a person who has invested money in that company if you start a private a, a public limited company and suppose you have 1000 shareholders that means those 1000 shareholders everyone has deposited some money in, in your company in the form of shares so it is your company's duty to provide good rewards on investment why do people become shareholder they want to earn some money banks gave interest at the rate of 5% 6% 7% what do you do in that it is less than inflation so people want good return for their money and if you invest your money in right company where there is really good return probably you will be able to earn very good return and if you will earn good returns you will be able to invest that money again in good sectors and over a period of time you will become a wealthy person so the source of wealth is your investment if you invest wisely you will become a wealthy person if you do not invest wisely your money will be wasted you will repent later on you cannot create wealth if you invest your money in banks like suppose you deposited money in banks fixed deposit scheme what return you will get 6% 7% 8% that's all if you invest in ppf you will get return of 9% but if you invest in good companies very good companies properly selecting ensuring proper uh, track record you may get returns up to 30% per annum and if you look at a long term period let's say 20 years or 30 years down the line you will be able to see that by investing wisely you are able to create wealth you become a wealthy person because you invested money very carefully very wisely so invest money very carefully very wisely and get very good rewards in the long run that is the basic fundamental of investment so if you have established a company as an entrepreneur it is the duty of your company to ensure that there are good returns to the investors over a long period of time so what do you do you create basic policies that we will try to protect and promote interest of shareholders we will protect and promote interest of stakeholders we will protect and promote interest of employees so that you have good employees in your company you have to create these policies written policies and these policies will help you in attracting best manpower best employees best investors best supporters best stakeholders so if your if your company has all these people what will happen your company will become a truly great company if your company's policies are good good people will join connect with you you will be able to grow your company will be able to grow and you are able to create wealth isn't it so your goals have to be very clear create wealth through right policies and contribute to wealth creation in society see one a fundamental law is that if a company is working for promotion of society a company is working for protection and pre preservation of society society will also try to protect that company simple law you contribute to development of society society will recognize it appreciate it and society will revert back look at tata group people respect tata group 
people consider Tata Group equivalent to government universities, government departments, because people believe this group is committed to society's development. Tata, the name is synonymous to quality. The name is synonymous to reliability, right? This is possible because of their policies. Over a period of time, over 150 years, Tata Group has been working for more than 150 years. It has been working since 1850, something like that. So for 150 years, they have remained committed to their fundamental goals. They have taken these policies, they have written down these policies, they have executed these policies, they have protected the interest of society, protected the interest of investors, protected the invest interest of their employees, followed values, followed ethical guidelines, and that is the result. On the other hand, if you look at uh, Vijay Malaya or Nira Modi, they did not care for society, they did not care for government, they did not care for uh, others. They try to consume only themselves. And today, you do not find their companies. They are on the verge of bankruptcy. Hundreds of companies have become bankrupt. You look at their history. They were once upon a time so wealthy. Today, they are non-existent. They have become bankrupt. Why? Find out the reason. Why companies like Tata Group are able to survive? Ultimately, as the member of the board of directors or as CEO of your company, you have to take strong actions to protect, promote and preserve your company's interest to enable that your company, which you established today, remain for next 100 years. How will your company remain for next 100 years? It will remain on the foundations that you lay. And the foundations are values, the fundamental values that you put, the fundamental values. Suppose you emphasize values like honesty, commitment, dedication, service to the society, right? Service to mankind. These will be percolated down to your next generations when the company will survive for next 100 years. It will be able to progress a lot. It will be able to help the society a lot. Right? So that fundamental understanding is necessary that when you set up a company, believe in it that your company is going to remain for next 100 years or more than that. And therefore, you have to set very clear guidelines for corporate governance. Invite the best people of our time in the board of directors. Invite philanthropists in your board of directors. Invite the, invite the best chartered accountant, best uh, financial analysts in your company as board of director members. Invite uh, the best uh, leaders, corporate leaders in your company's board of directors. Regularly give training to your employees. Regularly impart skills to your employees. Profits and loss are just a matter of time. But if your employees are good, committed, dedicated, having required expertise, believe in it, your company will have a very good goodwill in the market and your company will be able to survive and grow and uh, and uh, this will be the finest investment that you make. Entrepreneurship is the best way to create wealth. Entrepreneurship is the best way to create wealth. And therefore, you have to focus on building entrepreneurial vision. Right? Mindset is key to entrepreneurship. And when you have right mindset, you give balanced, you do marketing also, you focus on finance also, you create right information system also, you recruit right people, that is called human resource management. Right people, selecting them, recruiting them, giving them training, giving them um, employee motivation and enabling them to play an important role that is called employee empowerment. All these will help you. And then, you have to periodically 
review your working and help your company in contributing to the development of society and playing an active role in the society in the long run. What we find today is that large number of companies have failed miserably because they compromised with their values. They compromised with their fundamental ethics. They compromised with the society. They did not uh, care for social aspiration expectation. You want to create a long-term uh, connection with the world. Your company, therefore, has to have a long-term vision, long-term strategy. Long-term strategy means you have to be very clear what will be your objectives for next 20 years and how will you achieve those objectives? What will be the basic strategy? Even try to create open organization, octopus, openness, collaborative, create collaborative work culture, trust, trust your employees, create an environment of mutual trust, follow authenticity, principles of authenticity, be proactive, promote autonomy, employee autonomy, and enable creativity and experimentation to take place. These are eight principles of management that you have to follow. So follow these eight principles of management, eight fundamentals of fundamental values, which we call as octopace. Octopace values will enable you to spread ideals of happy society. Every organization must contribute towards happiness, well-being. Every organization has a duty to contribute to well-being in the society. Every organization is a part of society and therefore it has to contribute to the well-being in the society and society will re reciprocate. Right? The, every, the structure of the organization is from top to the bottom. You will be sitting at the top level somewhere in the leadership. The top leadership will consist of CEOs, chief executives, and thereafter there will be middle management, thereafter there will be junior management, and thereafter there will be those people who are undertaking work at the ground level. It should be your focus to minimize the levels, reduce the levels of the organization. It should be your focus to meet with every grassroots level worker. Give them respect, give them recognition for what they are doing. Encourage them for their innovations. It should be our duty. It should be our duty to spread in the entire organization the fundamental values, the fundamental aspirations, the fundamental vision, mission, goals, strategies that you want to aspire. You have to establish connection with the entire organization and uh, remember the success of the organization is the outcome of collective effort. So create a team environment in the organization. People should work in a team spirit. And over a period of time, you will be able to create impact making organizations if you really pursue your dreams of social innovations, social entrepreneurship, social development, and you respect innovation and development. Nothing is impossible. You can start from zero, take your organization to beyond your imagination and create world's biggest organizations in the years to come. Do you really want to aspire? You say yes. You really want to create the greatest organizations of tomorrow. That is what we want from you.